Hello and welcome to CNC Markets on Tuesday the 29th of March and the weekly market update. And as we head into the end of the first quarter of 2016, equity markets appear to be coasting very, very quietly into the quarter end after a fairly volatile quarter. The main focus I think this week is going to be on Friday's non-farm payrolls report and a host of Fed speakers. And I think most of the narrative since last month's or earlier this month's Fed meeting on the 16th of March has been which way the Fed is going to lean in its April meeting because in the wake of the very dovish meeting that we got on the 16th of March the narrative coming from a number of Fed speakers has probably been more hawkish than one would normally expect and that's driven a significant rally in the dollar over the course of the last few trading sessions, particularly against the yen, where we've seen where we've seen eight successive up days. We've also seen a significant move higher in the dollar index as well. And if you actually look at the client sentiment indicators, you can tell straight away that the market is predominantly geared to be slightly long of dollars. And I think one of the things that I've noticed over the course of the past quarter has been that while we've seen incremental gains in the US dollar, significant counter reactions have been quite violent in their nature. You've seen very strong down moves followed by very incremental up moves. And nowhere is this better illustrated than in the dollar index chart I will be showing you shortly. We'll also be looking at dollar yen and potential resistance levels there. And also be looking for evidence that potentially we could have seen a base in the pound against the dollar and also a top in the euro against the pound as well. So we're going to make a start by looking at the dollar index for our chart. Now since the peaks at the end of February we've been slowly drifting lower and I'll use the word drifting advisedly because if you look at some of the moves that we've seen lower some of them have been quite violent but when we've moved higher the moves higher have been incremental and that suggests to me that the market is very reluctant to be long of dollars. So it builds up its posi positions incrementally but it's very very quick to get out of them um, when you get a particularly dovish surprise and certainly some of the data that we've seen thus far despite the hawkish rhetoric that we saw and have seen over the past week or so does appear to suggest that an April rate rise despite what the Fed is suggesting is not on the table and certainly I think this week's payrolls report could bear that out but it's the average earnings data in particular that we need to be focused on, the wages data in light of the weak inflation data that we saw on Monday and the weak personal spending data that we, that we saw on Monday. So the level that I'm looking for in the dollar index is the 97 level, which I've highlighted as a horizontal support and resistance line. That for me is I think a significant resistance level if we are to break out of the downtrend that we've been in since the end of February. Now this resistance level in the dollar index also ties in I think quite nicely with this resistance level that we've got in this dollar yen daily chart. Now as can be seen from this chart we've been in a very nice downward channel since the middle of February. The top of that channel comes in around about 114.10. The bottom of the channel comes in just below the lows at 110.65. Now if you cast your mind back a few weeks ago when I talked about the dollar yen and a potential head and shoulders breakout from that 116 level that I talked about on the weekly chart a few weeks ago, you will know that I'm projecting potentially a move to 106 over the course of the next 12 months. So this lower dollar yen ties in with my long-term view that potentially we could move to 106, but we need to stay below that horizontal support and resistance line which comes cut straight through the middle of that Kumo cloud cover currently coming in around about 115.80, 116.20. Moving on to the pound and Euro sterling in particular and this is a weekly candle chart and as can be seen from this weekly candle chart the 200 week moving average currently is acting as a nice cap on Euro sterling. Currently comes in around about 79.35 79.40. We did briefly push above 79.40 late last week. We weren't able to sustain the move higher and that suggests to me that while we stay below that 79.40 level 
then there is a chance that we could have seen the bottom in sterling, certainly against the euro, and also potentially against the dollar as well. And that brings me on to the cable daily chart. And I have to give a little bit of a shout out to my colleague Colin in Canada for this because he posted a blog on this around about 12 hours ago. And it is a very, very nice pattern. But a word of caution, it's an evolving pattern. It's not a completed pattern. And there is a difference. As we can see from this daily chart, we've got a potential inverse head and shoulders. And it's a potential inverse head and shoulders where we've got the left shoulder at 140.80, we've got the right shoulder around about 140.60, and we've got the head around about 138.5. Now for this pattern to complete, we need to break above the neckline. Now the neckline comes in when you link the highs in February with the highs in March. That currently comes in around about 144.10. If we break through that, and I think there's a good chance we could certainly test it, then the potential for a six big figure move higher is a very real possibility. Everyone is talking the pound lower. Certainly the expectation is, and all manner of predictions have been that the pound's gonna go to 135 or 130. That then becomes a somewhat crowded trade. And that's the danger. That is the danger that we could get see that trade get a little bit crowded and we could push higher. So a lot will depend on this week's US data. I think and also a lot will depend on what comes out from non-farm payrolls on Friday. So that brings to a close this week's weekly market update. Just a reminder that Colin Szynski and myself will be hosting a webinar on Friday covering the US employment report. Tune in, that starts at 1.15, goes on until 1.45. Otherwise, thanks very much for listening. This is Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.